to Valeri. Valeri to the byline. Floating it behind me. They left it late, but the Timbers pulled off their most dramatic victory in quite some time in come from behind fashion to move back above the playoff line. With just six games left in the season, Wayne Rooney and DC United come to Providence Park with both teams in exciting playoff position battles. Lewis across for Shinya Shiki off the post. What a save, Steve Clark. Pushing away a sure goal. Timbers goalkeeper Steve Clark is our guest. It's Timbers in 30, and it starts right now. This is Timbers in 30, presented by AT&T. Welcome to Timbers in 30. I'm Jake Zivin. Last Saturday sure was exciting. Brian Fernandez's game winner in the 94th minute matched the latest ever game winner for the Timbers at Providence Park, and it was such an important goal in the playoff race. Another big match is coming up this weekend. They're all big at this point in the season, and here with us ahead of the match with DC United is Timbers goalkeeper Steve Clark. Steve, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, glad to be here. Let's start with, with last weekend. What a moment that was. I think you were the only player on the field, only Timbers player on the field, that didn't get involved in that dog pile at the end after Brian Fernandez's goal. What was this moment for you and what was it like for the team? Well, I mean, I'm a, a spectator just as anybody else in the audience because <laughs> I'm all the way down at the field, but I thought it was an amazing assist there by Diego and then Brian in the right spot at the right time, which is, you know, his MO lately. So uh, for me, I'm having a blast. I'm running around wild. I'm celebrating. I know I wasn't in that pileup because I didn't want to run 120, you know, meters. But uh, I'm feeling good at that moment. Yeah, we have a little. I think we have a camera view of you during this moment from the GoPro behind your goal and, and your reaction. And yeah, heading, <laughs> heading away. I'm running around doing the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Man, for for a goalkeeper in, in late in a game, you know, when when a game is tied like that, right? And and unless you're going to come up on a corner kick, you're not going to be directly involved in trying to get a winner. Sure. What, what emotions go through you? Well, you know, at, at that moment, you're you're just you're powerless because you yeah. you know I can't score. Right. I wish I could, but I can't. So you're just it's a team game. That's why we love team sports. That's why we love our teammates because there's times where you can do your job, and to a certain point, then it's you know up to the guys. So um, it was an amazing comeback and so important. You know, I think that um, it's like what was more important, the comeback or how important the game was. And they're like, wow, they're just huge, huge moments for us. So. Yeah. And how things turned around. And when you talk about involvement, I thought the goal that the, the Timbers actually conceded with Benny Fellhaber, yeah. a free goal. And I said on the broadcast, what more could Steve Clark do? I'm interested with your thought process from that. Yeah. And credit to Benny Fellhaber. He came out afterwards and he said, I meant to cross <laughs> the ball and send it in the, in the top bin, far corner. What were your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think that... Um Exactly, you know, I didn't think, I, after the goal, I would just, I went like this and said, man, get out of here, there's no way he meant to shoot that. <laughs> He's a great guy, and obviously he was, his celebration was kind of comical after the fact, though. Um, I saw, ex right when it came off his foot, you could see that, uh, right about here in my vision, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, that's going in. Yeah. And there was, it was helpless, because I'm thinking there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. I just had a great view of that, that cross shot. We, and so, um, that's what it was. You've had a lot to say about uh, preventing other goals this season and so much so on MLSsoccer.com they came out with the most underrated players of the season I thought credit to whoever's written this because I feel as though they have legitimately paid attention you were on that list your name were you aware of that and what are your thoughts when you see your, your name your, yourself your play being recognized no I wasn't I, I try to keep like especially at this point in the season you know you keep your blinders on stay focused in on what we're doing um, and uh, I'm doing a lot of yoga instead of doing a lot of reading articles about myself, which I think is important. But um, I I'm, I'm happy as anyone to get recognized. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially um, coming into the season where I was at and where I'm at now, I think it's been a, you know, a, a great, great run for me, a great ride for me, um, and I'm ready to close it out. I feel good about my game. As I said, I keep saying that to you guys. I keep yeah. saying, look, I feel good. I feel good. So um, I think a lot of the things I put into my game in the last couple of years are coming out, and the fruit, it's bearing fruit. So that's, for me, most rewarding, but I'll take an article here or there. You've been leading the league in goals against average and saves percentage for the past few months. 
You said in an interview a couple weeks ago that, that you don't think those are kind of totally fair ways to judge a goalkeeper. Sure. How do you judge your own play? Well, I think that statistics are a great part of it, but if you go statistics only, sometimes that doesn't show the true picture, you know? Right. But I mean, I think that statistics can show a, a small piece of it. Um, I, I like the American Soccer Analyst X goal. I think that's the, one, of the, one yeah. of the better ways to evaluate a goalkeeper, but... Um, for me, it's more what, what what am I doing inside the process to get a good job. So if I can control a few things that are internal, I know that I'll get results on the long run. So I'm not a yo-yo with a good game, a bad game. I stay focused on my process. Let's start to look towards Saturday's, uh, Sunday's match, rather, this weekend's match with D.C. United. Here are the Western Conference standings entering the weekend. The Timbers got a couple of beneficial results on Wednesday night. They stay in sixth place in the Western Conference, just three away from second and they're back to having a game in hand on everybody else in the conference. Out East, their opponent this weekend, DC United in fifth place, five points clear of the playoff line. The Timbers on facing Wayne Rooney and DC United is our Advocare training report. We have to make sure that we plan with him on the field and uh, also with him, you know, out of, of uh, traveling or not being here. So we have to plan. They are a good team regardless. They have good players. Uh, they are a team that can go anywhere as they show in Montreal and, and beat teams uh, in their home. So we, we need to be ready for it. And I'm sure the guys will be uh, in will face, you know, whatever team they're going to have on the field. It's really nice. I had the opportunity to play against them last year, uh, and it was it was beautiful. So it's you know I feel very proud you know to be able to play this kind of match. Well, it's kind of you know one of those that I was kind of looking forward to all year. Did them coming to Providence last year as well. I would wanted to go to DC and play in DC um, in the new stadium, but it, it for sure would be fun. It's you know a lot of familiar faces that I was you know playing with when I was there and kind of training with. So it'll be good to you know finally compete against them. Our look forward to look ahead is on DC United, who are 11, 10, and 9, 42 points, fifth place in the East. They've struggled since the beginning of the summer. They have just four wins in their last 18 games, but are pretty good on the road this season. Five, six, and four is their record. That's the third best away record in the league. Wayne Rooney leads them with 11 goals and seven assists, but he's already announced that he's leaving the club after the season to become a player coach for Derby County back in England. Uh, they had last weekend off for the international break, but beat Montreal 3 0. A big win for them on the road in their most recent match. -off. Huge win, and then this push for playoffs for DC United. And Ben Olsen, who revisits his rivalry with Giovanni Savarese, they went against each other as players once in, uh, in their MLS time as coaches last year, obviously, when the Timbers went to DC United. But what stands out to me about this side is their attack. And Wayne Rooney, of course, but he's been suspended for a few games for a red card offense. And Ola Kamara, who's come back into the team, he's come back into the league three goals in three games how will those two partner up they only had 24 minutes together before Wayne Rooney was sent off and then you look at Paula Ariola, who is a, a contributor he's a good piece to this side and Lucho Acosta he is a bit of an enigma this year all talks about him going to PSG during the offseason it fell through and his numbers have fallen through the bottom as well only six goals and two assists this year last year he had 10 goals 17 assists so all about their attack no one better to ask Steve Clark with the this DC United attack, but first let's start your old club. What will it be like for you, Steve, going up against it? your old club? You're with DC United before you sign with the Timbers. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, there's a lot of guys that I really like and you know got pretty close with for that uh, year that I was there. Um, so I'm looking forward to see them. I don't really feel much affinity towards the club. I was only there for a small time, so um, I'm more excited just to see the guys. Uh, and um, that's basically it. I don't. I'm kind of leave it at that. You were on the team when Wayne Rooney joined last summer, and we spoke to you a little bit kind of off the record about the impact that, that Wayne Rooney brought to the club last year. What was that like when, when he came into to that group midseason? I mean, I was happy to, to view that. I, you know, I, I, I like Wayne a lot. He's a, uh, a pretty, pretty amazing locker room guy, you know, and to see that firsthand was pretty special to see the effect on players that one guy could have. I know we talked about it last year, you know, when I got to Portland, but um, I think he's a special, special leader. A special talent, obviously, but uh, you know, at this stage of the career, just a pretty, pretty special leader. Special qualities he does have. He scored a wonder goal against Orlando. Not a wonder goal for him, maybe just inside his own halfway line against Orlando City. His goal, playing against a player like Wayne Rooney, is it always in your mind that he's capable of something special? To what we saw him score earlier this year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, I'll, I'll be aware of where he is on the pitch, <laughs> um, especially um, well. 
when I when we have the ball, when, when they have the ball, I'm going to be aware of where he is. He's a he can score from anywhere, and I mean I know that he'll be looking forward to trying to get one on me for sure. You look at your position as well. It's interesting all the different centre back partnerships that we're seeing. What has to adjust when right now is Claude Yelna and Bill Tui Loma in front of you. Do center backs coming in, do they have to adjust to you, to how you play, or do you have to adjust to whoever's in front of you? Yeah, it's probably a little bit of both. Um, I mean, I try to get to know their games, you know, pretty intimately to see how I can help them, how they fit into what we're doing. So I'm sure they would say they have to adjust to playing to me <laughs> um, and me screaming and talking a lot on the field. But um, I like to try to make it, um, look, I'm here to help. I want to I want to be as supportive and you know give as much good for information because we're all just trying to be successful out there so um, Claude and Bill were fantastic last game um, and we're going to look to keep that going we hope you guys can Steve thanks so much for taking the time to join us ahead of the match against DC United and good luck on Sunday yeah awesome Timbers and DC United Sunday 12 30 p.m. this is important to note it's a time change from the original schedule that came out at the beginning of the year it's because of a TV change you can now watch this match on ESPN also listen on the radio 750 the game at 12 30 on Sunday and following the historic reopening of Providence Park earlier this summer you now have a chance to see the Timbers in person limited availability remains for select matches so grab the best seats before they're gone. Your tickets starting at $23 can be reserved at Timbers.com. Coming up last weekend was the Timbers and Thorns annual Stand Together Banquet. Always a wonderful night. Zarek Valentin will show you the best and worst of the evening's fashion. But next, it's the breakaway. Some controversial moments in MLS on Wednesday and last weekend. We'll show you what everyone's talking about when we come back. Here's your chance to win a Timbers Ultimate Match Day experience. Compliments of your local Allstate agents. Go to Timbers.com slash Allstate to enter for a chance to win. One lucky winner will get four tickets, four VIP pregame passes, four jerseys, four scarves, and one post-game player meet and greet. Now back to Timbers and 30, presented by AT&T. Let's look around MLS on the breakaway. Let's begin in Chicago. Big news today. The team was sold to minority owner Joe Mansueto, and they are officially moving to Soldier Field next year. That's a big move. Both you and I know from calling games when the Timbers are at Chicago. It's a long distance to get out to Bridgeview, and so you can imagine for fans, it's a second thought whether you go to a game or not. But I'm going to put it back to you because you grew up watching the fire at Soldier Field. How big a move is this? Yeah, look, they were kind of the, I felt, the, one of the best clubs of MLS 1.0 on and off the field playing in Soldier Field. Can they get back to being a top club in the league. The league will hope so is the third biggest market. It's a step in the right direction. I don't know if they'll fill it up right away, but they needed to get out of Bridgeview for sure. A lot of controversy midweek. Colorado LA, a wild final 10 minutes will begin with a penalty given to Colorado that LA thinks should not have been given. Well, I think Sheena Shiki throws his legs out here. I think this is simulation, but the referee didn't think so, and there wasn't a, a review recommended by the, the assistant referee. Just look here there is slight contact on the right leg of Shinishiki but his motion continues forward and it's an afterthought for him to go aground I thought this was a, the wrong decision and went against the galaxy so Colorado goes up 2-1 but LA thinks they should have a chance to tie with a penalty kick of their own really late it was not given right back Felcher here he gets a header on the ball but there was contact afterwards from the defender Wilson coming in and again LA Galaxy on the wrong side of a decision just look in the middle of your screen when it comes back the ball comes back Felcher he does get the header but there's a left leg that comes up and it does make contact with the head of Felcher should have been a penalty regardless if the contact happened just after the header took place referee should have pointed to the spot Fotis Pizakos went to the monitor for VAR but chose to stick with his call on the field of no penalty it helps the Timbers that win though for Colorado over LA and then last weekend Antonio Delamea for New England he was given a yellow card for this foul it went to video review turned into a red card for dog so but that red card was then overturned this week by the independent uh, disciplinary committee and he'll play this weekend i don't think it's even a foul here delamea he makes contact on the ball and through his natural motion making that challenge he does take out castellanos I, I think it was the wrong decision by the referee, but you have to remember, people are saying, well, why didn't VAR overturn the foul? VAR can't overturn the foul. They can only, only overturn match-altering situations. And so VAR have said, well, if you're going to call this a foul to the referee, then it should be a red card, then it should be dog. So that's why the referee was recommended to go to review. That's why the red card was shown, but it shouldn't have been a foul in the first case. 
Well, after the break, we're going to hear from the Portland Thorns after a tough night at Providence Park, how they move forward. And up next, Derek Valentine takes us behind the scenes at the Stand Together Banquet, shows us the best and worst of his teammates' fashion choices. Share your best Diego Valeri photobomb on Twitter and Instagram using hashtag DaimlerPhotobomb, and you could win an ultimate fan package and passes to meet Valeri after an upcoming match courtesy of Daimler Trucks North America. Visit Timbers.com slash photobomb for more information and to download your own. Now back to Timbers and 30, presented by AT&T. On Sunday night, the Timbers and Thorns held their annual Stand Together Banquet. It's a fundraiser for the club's community platform. The club named its 2019 community MVPs from the Timbers, Sebastian Blanco, and repeat winners Eric Valentin from the Thorns, Midge Purse, and Haley Rasso. The night is also one where the teams can show off their style. As Eric Valentin got some help from a stylist from Mario's to rate his teammates' looks. We are at the 2019 Stand Together Banquet. We'll be running through a little of the outfits. Hopefully you don't crush them too hard. Absolutely not. We're going to go easy. Somewhat easy. <laughs> so, Jeff, what was your thought process in, in getting your outfit together today? Well, I need to be here, and they say you have to wear a suit. My God, that story's riveting. Uh, how would you rate Jeff's outfit, and I'll give a rating as well? Let's go six and a half. Wow, I'll take that. I was actually going to go more. I think his suit is very fitting towards Jeff. I was going to give him 7.35. Billy, welcome. <laughs> How's it going, Z? Question, did you get dressed in the dark, or was this a conscious decision to wear a suit like this? Uh, it was my choice. I love it. I think no tie is great. Yeah. It's cocktail, you can go with no tie. Yes. The chain makes it so cool, man. What do you give it? I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10, honestly. It's clean. 6.3. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, tell us, tell us your thoughts. Yeah, look. Um... Where did the jacket come from? Because this is killer. I mean, Thank this you. looks great. Thank Seriously. you so much. I'm going with like a little military slash pilgrim look. I'm a big fan of all black. I don't think all black can go wrong. What rating would you give this, though? We've been rating. I mean, I got to go like 9 out of 10, honestly. Very clean. Thank yeah. You. I was going to go 8.75. 8.75. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's very solid. It's one of my favorite ones I've seen all day. Julio, what was your inspiration when you put on this outfit? Well, actually, my girlfriend, she she dressed me for this for this event. What would you give this out of 10? This is an easy nine. This is a nine and a half. This is one of my most favorite. Simple, sleek. This is my one of my favorite outfits of the night. Uh, lo primero que agarré, no claro, puedo verlo. He said he, the first thing he, he found that he put on. And I said, it's very obvious so we can tell that. And what I always say is if you put the ball in the back of the net, you can do whatever you want. And if this man scores as much as he can, he can wear this up. Outfit. And we're going seven and a half. Seven and a half out of ten. For me, he just slipped the 50 in my back pocket, so he gets a 9.3. I think you actually have something special planned, don't you? Well, yeah, so we have a free custom suit on auction tonight. I think, you know, some of the guys could really uh, benefit from it. If I don't get it myself, hopefully someone else does, but it's for a good cause. So go out, support Stand Together. We love you guys. Thanks for joining us. There we go. Love it. The Thorns had a big-time match on Wednesday night, an NWSL title game rematch that would go a long way in determining this season's Shield winner, and it was a really rough night for the Thorns, arguably the worst in their history. North Carolina went up 3-0 before the 25th minute, and they never let up, winning 6-0, jumping ahead of the Thorns and into first in the league. The Thorns are still in second place, but after a loss like that, the question is, where do they go from here? Uh, unfortunately, we have we have some time before our next game. So, first of all, uh, we all have to have our own reflection. Most importantly, me and the staff obviously need to. It starts with us and ends with us. We need we've got work to do, but us taking our time and then moving on. And, and to be fair, it's not going to be about this game. It's going to be about what who we are and what we are going to be for these remaining regular season games uh, and what we're fighting for, and making sure we're very clear on what that is and then put in the performance that reflects that. As Mark Parsons said, the Thorns have this weekend off, then they are back at home next weekend. Saturday, September 21st, a 7.30 start against the Houston Dash. Get tickets at thornsfc.com. T2 hosting Orange County SC last Sunday. T2 was down 2-0 in the 59th minute. Big save by Orange County, but Gio Calixtro's shot is helped in by Foster Langsdorf. Foster kind of stole the goal there. That was it for T2 scoring, though. They fall 2-1. They're back below the playoff line. They'll try to get back above that line on Saturday. They're on the road at Real Monarchs at noon. You can watch the match on ESPN+. 
Coming up after the break, MLS Picks. Ross continues his MLS Picks match against a local celebrity when we return. Now that summer is over, the Portland Timbers and Aviation Gin want to give you a round trip staycation. This is your chance to win VIP treatment, which includes one night stay at the Hotel of the Nines, a ticket and VIP passes to the Timbers October 6th match tickets that is entered today at timbers.com slash aviation gin. Now back to Timbers and 30, presented by AT&T. Time for MLS Picks. You'll recall from last week, this is a special showdown between Ross and Fox 12 meteorologist Brian McMillan. Two weeks long because there were only four games last week, and Brian has a 3-2 lead. Smug. It should be 3-2 the other way. New England, what a nightmare My that favorite, game was for you me. You know what, Ross? you got to remember with the Portland Timbers, there's no pity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No pity in the Rose City. On Brian today. There's a bet on the line <laughs> yeah. for this total contest. 11 more games for you guys to pick. What's I'll the go. If, if I win, then you have to wear uh, the, the short shorts <laughs> that I had banter with from wearing. You're going to have to roll them up with a Canadian <laughs> water tattoo on your, your leg. I hear that you're going to have to shave your upper thigh to make that come through as well. Yeah, well, maybe. But that's not going to happen because when I win, you're going right. to have to do a very special, messy weather report. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. Let's look at the yeah. picks quickly between you guys. Four differences are going to determine who's the winner. You've stuck with New York City FC? I have. You know what? They came through for me uh, right. last weekend. i got to stick with them. Philadelphia, that's a big one against LAFC. And Philadelphia, I think they're going to surprise Bob Bradley. And Carlos Vela probably returning. I think Philadelphia take it. I think it's too close. And then uh, down here, let's see. Or, oh, oh. The yeah. Minnesota one. Yeah, Minnesota one against Real Salt Lake. I was struggling with this. I almost went with Minnesota, but I had to take the draw. You're good at this, Brian. Your, weather, well. your meteorologist skills are showing through. What a showdown. Ross That's all versus, his skills. Ross versus here. Ryan. Bet on the line for next week. Of course, the game not on here. Timbers DC United, 1230 on Sunday on ESPN and on 750. The game also Timbers and the Red Bulls on Wednesday. We'll talk to you after that. Brian will be back next week on Timbers in 30. Thank you for watching Timbers in 30, presented by AT&T. For more on the club, visit Timbers.com.